Now this is the brand new Razer Blade 14 and look, they did not change the design at all this year. And in some ways that's probably a good thing because most 14 inch gaming laptops right now are going thinner and lighter, which is great for travel, but there's some downfalls to that. Like you get soldered on memory, you get weaker GPUs just because they have to accommodate that form factor. With this thicker design, you get better performance. You get upgradable memory, which is very important to a lot of people these days. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. And there are two things that I think are holding this back. But overall, this is probably very different compared to most 14 inch gaming laptops that are coming out right now. Now the design is identical, so you still get that black anodized aluminum. Obviously it picks up a lot of fingerprints as you can see here. It feels very solid. Like you pick this thing up, it feels very heavy, even though it's only under four pounds. It doesn't feel cheap because sometimes when you go super light and thin, the aluminum is not as thick because they're mixing it with other substrates. Whereas this is just a chunkier feel. Port lineup is identical to the previous one. You have your proprietary power connector. You do get a 230 watt charger, USB-A, USB 4.0 type C port, combo audio jack. And then on the other side, you have your Kensington lock HDMI 2.1, another USB-A port, and then another USB 4.0 port. The one thing that I love about this laptop is when you open it up, the hinge is nice and tight. Like the previous Asus G14 would wobble like crazy. Like don't get me wrong, there's a little bit of wobble here, but you feel the hinge when you're opening and closing this, and it's very, very secure. The keyboard layout is also identical. I do love the fact that the RGB is nice and bright. You can obviously change it to any color you want. The speaker setup is still the same. They're okay speakers. They're definitely not better than the G14, but you know, they sound okay. They just don't have a lot of bass or low end to them. Touchpad is still nice and massive. Like it's a big touchpad. There's a lot of space to move your fingers around. I do wish one day that Razer puts a haptic touchpad in here. They kind of should considering how much higher they price their laptops to the competition. You have enough space for your hands on the keyboard deck. You have Windows Hello to log you on. There's no fingerprint scanner. Sticker placement is pretty simple. NVIDIA is not on here. I think there's some shenanigans going on in the sticker department where AMD is paying the sticker guy behind a NVIDIA's back. But yeah, like, you know, it's just a solid, solid build. Now this is what the webcam looks like. It's a 1080p webcam and it looks pretty good based on studio lighting. Obviously it's gonna look a little worse if it's more normal lighting in your house, but you guys let me know how it looks and obviously how the microphones sound. Now the one area where I think they kind of dropped the ball was the display option. Like, don't get me wrong. This is a very nice IPS panel. It has a 2560 by 1600 resolution, 240 Hertz, a pretty respectable response time, good color gamut and good color accuracy, but it's just not OLED. A lot of these other 14 inch gaming laptops are using these newer OLED panels. And again, because this is priced so high, it should have that OLED panel as well, or at least make it an option. The reason why I say an option is because I know some of you are still worried about OLED burn-in and you'd prefer this IPS panel, but it should definitely have been on the table. Now, the other thing they also changed this year was the Razer Synapse performance menu. You have a turbo mode now, you still have the custom mode, but you also get the ability to optimize the CPU or change the voltages. So if you want to basically lower the voltage or power that's going to the CPU, so you can obviously have the CPU run cooler, you now have that choice. Now my SKU costs $2,700, $700 more than the G14 with identical specs. So you're getting 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. You have a Ryzen 9 8945HS CPU, 14 inch IPS display, and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. And don't get me wrong, the performance is better compared to last year's model. It's using the newer 8945HS, which is obviously a boost up. It's not a drastic boost, but it is noticeable in the majority of applications that I tested. Single core clock speeds are about the same, but multi-core speeds are obviously faster. If you're using this for any sort of design work or video work, it is a little bit of an increase compared to last year's model. And the same holds true if you're using Photoshop. Mozilla Firefox, it actually performed a little bit slower compared to last year's
this model, but not by much to be like, wow, this is a nerf, but overall it's pretty good. But the one area that really surprised me was GPU performance, because this is using a GPU, an RTX 4070 with a TGP of 140 watts, the same as last year. Most of these newer 14 inch gaming laptops are using TGPs of like 90 or 100, which is really low. Now, generally with 4070s, it's not a drastic difference, but once you're over 100 and you're comparing it to stuff under 100, there's a little bit of a difference. Like even though this has the same TGP as last year's model, it actually performed better. Like in 3D Mark Time Spy, I saw this boost up to almost 140 watts, whereas the previous model would stay in the mid 120s. Now, if you're buying this for gaming, you are going to get better performance compared to the G14 or even the upcoming HP Omen Transcend 14, just because that GPU can boost higher. It's not going to be a massive difference, but you are looking anywhere from 8 to 12 frames more with this laptop compared to those guys. And it doesn't matter if you're gaming at 1920 by 1200 or 2560 by 1600. The one thing that really shocked me about this laptop was the fan noise. 44 decibels under full load running Prime 95. That is incredible. Most other laptops doing the same test will sit anywhere from the low to mid 50s, which is crazy loud compared to 44. Now, the other thing I also noticed, it was able to maintain a high average core clock speed, very similar to last year's model while keeping the fan noise low. Even the temperatures were pretty identical to last year's model, which if you think about it, again, is incredible. But the one area that was a little bit different was the TGP. This thing was boosting to like the mid 130s, whereas last year's model was kind of sitting in the mid 120s, even though technically they're advertised for 140 watts. Now internally, you have the vapor chamber cooler, which obviously is helping with its cooling system. You do have a swappable Wi-Fi card. You have a replaceable drive, which you can upgrade to something bigger if you really want. But most importantly, you have upgradable RAM. And that's what's gonna set this 14 inch gaming laptop compared to most that are coming out on the market this year. You can upgrade the RAM to 96 gigabytes, which means the longevity of this laptop is gonna be much better than the competition. Now the battery size is a little bit smaller. You're looking at a 68 watt hour battery. The battery life has improved compared to last year's model, but not by much. Now here's the thing, if you want the best performing 14 inch gaming laptop, it probably, and I'm saying probably because I haven't tested them all yet, will be the Razer Blade 14. It didn't follow everyone's footsteps by making designs lighter, smaller, and thinner. With this sort of chassis, you can keep the vapor chamber cooler, you can have the upgradable RAM, you can have the 140 watt TGP RTX 4070, where those other competitors had to sort of make sacrifices. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not perfect. I think they should have offered an OLED option. And the bigger question is, whether or not this laptop is worth $700 more compared to other competing products. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.